Okay, um, this video is going to be an introduction to proteins, um, and then there'll be subsequent videos that sort of breaks down how we think about the structure of proteins. Um, proteins, as we talked about in our central dogma uh, discussion, are coded for by genes. They're composed of monomers, which are amino acids, and when we tie those amino acids together into a polymer, that's when we call it a polypeptide or a protein. A lot of those words are uh, overlapping and synonymous. Now, an important feature of biochemistry is the way we think about these proteins is each of these amino acids has a particular chemistry associated with it. And the chemistry of each amino acid is functional, just like the functional groups we talked about in organic chemistry. And so when we think about a long polymer of these amino acids in a protein, really we think that protein has some function associated with it. And the function of that overall protein is really a combination of the functions of all the amino acids that are part of its sequence. And so there's a real connection between the structure of a protein, its uh, three-dimensional shape, and the chemistry of the individual amino acids that are present in there, and its function. There's a relationship between the structure, structure and the function. Now, what can these strings of amino acids do? What, what are proteins capable of? Lots and lots of different things. They're incredibly important in biochemistry. Sometimes they're just structural proteins. They build walls or membranes or um, things like that. Sometimes they just have binding capabilities. Hemoglobin is a good example where it binds to oxygen um, and releases oxygen. And also we'll talk a lot about how proteins can act as catalysts, right? Not being consumed or created during the course of a reaction, but just catalyzing a reaction as an enzyme. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about quantifying and thinking about proteins as enzymes. Now, um, proteins are really complicated to display and to draw. And here's where we're going to think sort of at the junction between a chemist and a biologist. In chemistry classes up till now, you've probably written out the complete structure of all the molecules that you've talked about, whether that's a simple salt in, in or, or in introductory chemistry, or whether it's an organic molecule that you've drawn out, like cyclohexane or things like that. Um, in biology, biologists tend to not draw structures of things very often. They'll draw a big box and say, this is the molecule. Um, and draw cartoons to display how um, bi biological processes occur. Now, with proteins, um, we have to straddle the line, right? We can describe um, the structure of the protein by drawing out all the bonds and atoms that are present in the amino acids that make up that protein sequence, um, but that is really, really cumbersome and often is unnecessary. Um, we could just draw a big box and say this is a protein. Um, usually we try to try to straddle the line somewhere and give a little bit of chemical information about these proteins but not too much so that it becomes so cumbersome. So what I've got um, displayed here is a protein and this protein here is myoglobin and you can see that the artist in this case has drawn myoglobin with some detail to it. Right, you can see individual bonds here, um, a lot of bonds, right? And you could see some cyclic things. These are cyclic amino acids, um, um, but really, it's really hard to tell. It's like, what's the first amino acid here? Maybe it's that one down there. What is that amino acid? You know, honestly, I couldn't tell you. There's, you know, it looks like there's a lot of detail, but there's really not that much information there. It's hard to tell what is going on. Now, you can see something sort of special in this cartoon of myoglobin, and this is a heme group, right? This is a non-amino acid part of a protein, and it's a good example, myoglobin is, of a protein that has a cofactor with it. And this protein functions not just with all its amino acids, 
but it also pulls along another molecule to help it, in this case, bind oxygen. Myoglobin is an oxygen binding protein that's present in your muscles, myo, right? Um, and also, you can see this is the heme group, which is this organic ring system that holds a big fat iron atom in the middle. This iron atom is coupled to the overall protein through, this is a histidine amino acid, that's part of the overall polypeptide here, and it's this iron that directly binds to oxygen and myoglobin. Now, so this artist showed you, there's a bunch of different bonds here in the amino acid chain. There's a lot of information about the heme group and the iron atom, but this is just one way to choose how to display a protein like myoglobin. Here's another one, right? At face value, this looks like it has less information in it, right? There's a whole lot less bonds present, but I, honestly, I like this one a little better. Instead of showing you all these bonds that are present in the amino acids, um, it just numbers the things. And so here's the first amino acid, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, so on and so forth, all the way to, what do we got here? Blah, 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 blah. What's the final one? 153. This is 100. This uh, is also myoglobin, and now we can tell myoglobin has 153 amino acids, going from number one to 153. Um, they have a particular sequence, um, but we can't tell what those amino acids are. It doesn't tell us anything about it. But it gives us maybe a little information about the three-dimensional shape, right? It kind of arranges these into tubes. Maybe a little hinge up here, another tube. And then we've got tons and tons of information about that heme group and the iron atom in the middle. And there is a little bit of more information about amino acid number 93. This is that histidine that's holding on to the iron atom, which uh, can hold on to oxygen or some other things. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here's another look at myoglobin. This one. We've lost almost all information about individual amino acids. We don't know how many there are. We don't know what sequence they're in. But we still have some interesting structural information here. What you can see is that a lot of the amino acid uh, stretches in myoglobin are arranged in three-dimensional space as a helix. These things are called alpha helices, and we'll see those are a very, very, very common structure present in a lot of different proteins. And so now we, well, we might get a little better sense of the three-dimensional shape of myoglobin. It's really composed of these, these helices coupled together by these sort of hinges outlined in yellow. And again, we get a lot of information about that heme group and even the histidines that are involved with binding that big iron atom in the middle. So there's lots of ways to display even a protein like myoglobin, right, from uh, something that looks like it's an organic chemistry book to something sort of in between that to maybe more of a biologist look at it, just drawing some, some, some cartoon of it. So how do we wrap our heads around protein structure, right? Well, we, we break it apart into pieces. So we're going to think of protein structure in really four different levels, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. And we'll look at each of these with individual videos, but I can describe in general what, how, what they mean. The primary structure of a protein is just the sequence of amino acids, listing them sequentially. First there's a methionine, then an alanine, leucine. Just a list of those is a description of the primary structure of the protein. It doesn't really tell you anything about the shape, but it tells you what flavors of amino acids are in there. Now, once we start talking about shape, we've gone into the secondary structure. That describes sort of local domains, small pieces of the protein. So if we go back here, this alpha helix is a description of a secondary structure. It's not the description of the whole protein. It just says right here, this local piece of it is an alpha helix. That's a description of a secondary structure. And there's lots of things besides helices or alpha helices that can be secondary structures. We'll look at the alpha helix in depth, and then we'll look at a couple of sheets, which look very different than the alpha helix. But they're local domains, right? Uh, tertiary structure is is looking at the entire protein, the entire polypeptide. And really, we just 
uh, segmented into two different groups. Is the uh, entire protein look like um, something in particular? And then we say it's a fibrous protein. Like, is it a he, the whole protein, is it a helix, or is it a cube, or is it a square, or a line? Those are called fibrous proteins, and usually when you have uh, overall shape that you can describe pretty easily like that, the protein doesn't do anything incredibly complicated, and so it's usually a structural protein. We'll look at some examples of fibrous proteins that are structural. Now, if the protein is something like myoglobin, and it's very hard to describe what its overall shape is. It just looks like a glob in three dimensions. You say, well, it's a globular protein. It looks like a big glob. Okay, um, And we'll look at an example of a globular protein. The last uh, category of structure, quaternary structure, is when you have multiple polypeptides joining together to form a, a unit. And that's called quaternary structure. We can think of a protein that has quaternary structure. Really, it has subunits attached to it. You know, myoglobin does not have any quaternary structure. This is one polypeptide. Now, a highly related molecule, protein hemoglobin, is actually a tetramer. It has four subunits that look a lot like myoglobin. And those four polypeptides uh, work together to help bind oxygen. Um, and so a molecule like hemoglobin with subunits has quaternary structure and that deserves some sort of description.